Hi, and thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, my name is Nadia. I'm a senior product manager at Amazon. And today I would like to talk to you about product management and mental health. So a bit of a prehistory, my background is I have um, about 12 years of experience in product management and I also have uh, big family and three kids. So the question of mental health and maintaining life working balance is very um, relevant to me personally. I have done a lot of research and also worked with a therapist to achieve my perfect balance in life. And for today, I just wanted to share with you everything that I worked on so far. And I hope it could be useful for, for, for you guys and also can help I'm actually someone who may be facing the anxiety or burnout at work and just is not sure what to do about it. So um, today there are three things I would like to talk to you about. First, what is this burnout in product management? Number two is when to cope with never ending workload and safe space environment. And number three is about how to actually rejuvenate, disconnect, and vacation so that you get the best out of it and can continue your performance as a product manager. So let's start with number one. What is actually a, a burnout in product management? According to the Dictionary of Psychology, burnout is physical, emotional, mental exhaustion. Uh, which is accompanied by this, uh, decreased motivation, lower performance, and negative attitudes towards oneself and others. In a short, in short, what is the burnout at work? This is when you as a product manager um, get irritated easily, get triggered really easily, even the small tasks become a burden for you. This is when it means that you are headed towards the actual burnout. So why does it actually happen? Um, Product management role, as you all most likely already know, is not really clearly defined in terms of roles and responsibilities. We are often called CEOs of our product, which puts a lot of ownership and a lot of pressure on us as a product managers. It requires a lot of multitasking. Uh, it really depends on the organization and on the actual company strategy and the way they see their product managers. Long story short, product management can actually lead you to a burnout pretty easily if not managed and prioritized properly. So um, Forbes actually published a study of Cell and LMS where they surveyed uh, 1,200 people, um, US employees in tech in 2021, and 72% of those people um, responded state, saying that they're going to quit their job the coming of the next year, and 30% of those reasons were burnout. So let's dig a little bit better, uh, sorry, a little bit deeper and explore what are the actual reasons behind the burnout in the product management role. Uh, there is a researcher in the uh, University of Berkeley in California. Um, her name is Christina Maslich. She actually defined the top six factors that lead to burnout. And number one of those factors is a manageable workload, which, which everyone is actually aware of. But there are other five factors that are not that um, visible or not particularly clear sometimes uh, when we do not really consciously understand those are actually the factors that stress us out, not their unmanageable workload. So let's talk a little bit more about those. Um, for example, let's talk about lack of autonomy. This is where uh, you as a product manager cannot or are not equipped to make a decision or access the resources that help you to, to make those decisions. That leads to a lot of frustration, leads to a lot of stress, and also because you're considered a no-no of the product, ultimately leads to um, anxiety or an uh, even deeper state of stress. The number three is insufficient reward. Well, if you do not receive the recognition or... Um, Good, like adequate feedback to your work, that can feel frustrating. However, in a product management role, um, at least that has been my experience so far, a lot of times uh, you get a lot of feedback in terms of what can be done better, a lot of ideas that potentially could lead you to better ways of doing things, to be more efficient. But when you have all of those document reviews, all of those feedback, a lot of times you don't Nobody tells you, oh, look, great job. Like, I see a lot of thoughts that you put in there. Um, people jump right away to see the end conclusion. This is also one of the factors that um, leads to a lot of frustration 
um, in a product manager, a product management, product management role. And if you have been in a lot of leadership reviews, you know what I'm talking about. The other piece is a um, breakdown of community, which means the teams have difficulties communicating. And in the era of COVID, uh, this has became one of the first factors that led to a lot of burnout. This is where we out of a sudden all became remote. There is no a sense of a team in a way. Everyone is focusing on, on particular goals they're working on. And because there is also lack of communication due to, due to us not being in the office team, room and also not being able to just go to someone's desk and have a quick conversation, that a lot led to a disconnect between the between the teams, between the teammates, um, and hence also again add additional pressure if you as a product manager need to have an impact on the stakeholders who are not directly reporting into you, but you need to convince them to cooperate or work together with you. Again leads to a lot of additional friction that is some that is that is leading to anxiety and stress in the end. Um, and the last one is the values of conflict. This is when you identify that the way you operate um, or the way you personal values are, they do not align with the values of the organization. So basically those six combined uh, lead to frustration and burnout. I'm sure there are much more than those, but those were the top six that the researchers have identified. And from personal experience, um, that actually captures in a nutshell the big bucket of the um, that contributes to a lot of stress in everyday work of, as a product manager, for me personally. So now since we identified the reason um, for the burnout and what the burnout actually is, let's talk a little bit more about when when do like when like when you ask yourself this question, when actually do I still cope with never-ending workloads in a fast-paced environment? When is it worth it? When do I continue doing it? So in order to answer this question, there are a couple of approaches you can take. Um, for me personally, I work with a therapist to actually help me to take a step back and to understand what are the stressful moments in my workload to help me reflect on my day-to-day and help me actually identify what are those reasons that make me feel um, burned out or stressed out or anxious um, or uncomfortable. It depends on what are the main, I guess, contributors for you that are relevant for you. So the first question that um, is recommended to think about uh, is when you think that should I stay? Should I go? Should I? Uh, I don't like it anymore here. I feel stressed and burned out. I should just quit. From my personal experience, what I would recommend doing instead of drastically changing the environment that you're in, um, you should really just think about the source of your frustration. Um, I would recommend doing this exercise of recording it, like taking a piece of paper and throughout a week or two, actually recording the moments that bring you stress, anxiety, frustration, or you're feeling uncomfortable, whatever that is for you that makes you think that you would like to, to quit. Because um, one thing to consider is that quitting a job does not mean that you're actually resolving the core issues that you might have um, it, with, with the situation. The, um, the psychologists recommend to, before quitting, try to improve the existing situation in order to understand the source of your problem and potentially try to solve it. Because quitting the job doesn't really mean that it's um, where you're gonna go, where, you, where you're gonna go, the grass is gonna be greener and that you're not gonna feel burnt out in the place where you're going. So the recommendation here is uh, to record in a journal or a piece of paper, whatever it is for you, uh, for about two weeks. The moments that bring you stress, discomfort, and also rate them. And at the end of the week, you look back and based on those moments, you can identify the main stressors in your working life. And based on that, the next step would be to create your wish list. How can you deal with those? And then you could talk to your manager about it. Um, in this case, for example, if you are overwhelmed, that means that there's a potential problem with the workload. So could you get an intern? Could you delegate? Could you potentially um, deprioritize certain things? 
And I would encourage you to really be open about it and talk with it about your manager who actually can help you manage that. And maybe that could even solve your problem. And instead of being stressed, you end up actually coming across as more mature professional and getting um, to the next step in your career. Number three question to ask yourself uh, is, are you doing your basics? Basics are doing exercise, eating good food, and getting the enough amount of sleep. Those are the basics that everyone knows about. However, not everyone does it. How many times during the day you miss your lunch? Because there is something more important, because there is a meeting, and you just don't get up from your desk for a couple of hours, or maybe eight hours. Um, however, when your body does not get enough rest, does not rejuvenate, it potentially leads to um, even more stress accumulation than um, if you do, if you continuously doing this and then um, keep your body in balance with, um, with a healthy lifestyle. Um, Deloitte did the research in 2022 where they asked millennials and Gen Z uh, whether they, what are the top three reasons they would want, if they were to leave their job, what would be the top reasons uh, of those? And 40% uh, of Gen Zs and 24% of millennials said that that would be stress and burnout. So if you're doing your basics, it, that can help you to be your, uh, it can help your body to be more resistant to actually avoid the stress because if stress and burnout is different things, and it's important to differentiate between the two. So once you've done your homework and you identify the reasons that you you think lead you to burnout, uh, you could eliminate those by simply um, eating healthy and getting enough sleep. So trying to doing that in parallel to working uh, with your manager on uh, strategies to mitigate the risk the risk factors that lead you to burnout could help you actually to feel happier at your current job instead of quitting. And the fourth question to answer your, about um, when you make a decision whether you should you should stay you should go is the to think about the cost of the burnout. Does the burnout translate into negative emotions when you come home? Does it affect your relationship with your kids, with your loved ones? And if it does, that would be your cost to your burnout. For you personally, that might be something else. Um, that might be giving up something on a personal side in order to work more or in order to progress in your career. Um, for everyone, it's very individual. But once you have those four factors, once you answer the four questions that I've just been talking about, that will help you to identify whether coping with never-ending workload and fast-paced environments is actually worth it for you and whether the burnout that you're experiencing is really a burnout or it's just certain um, certain factors in your life that you can change. So um, we spoke a little bit uh, about the what is worth, um, um, whether it's worth to stay in a company or whether it's worth quitting when you feel burnout. Let's talk a little bit uh, about how vacation, how this, how this ability to disconnect and rejuvenate can actually help you to over, not come to actually the state of burnout, uh, be a better product manager. Uh, how can it help you to um, feel, feel happy in your general work and also personal life? Um, there are, when we talk about vacation, um, a lot of people think that vacation means, uh, you know, going somewhere, leaving somewhere. However, let's talk about vacation in general as a time off from work. It does not matter if it's a vacation, if it's just a long weekend, whatever you call vacation for yourself. Let's keep that term when we talk about vacation. Um, I read certain psychology studies about how different people approach vacation. And the, this slide represents the advice that I've collected from several studies that have been run within the last five years. And um, on the other hand, they, uh, there's also, uh, there are also different approaches you can take uh, to help you um, get disconnected and rejuvenate. So this is just, I'm by any means now a therapist 
all psychologists. This is just something that, um, it, this is just a result of my research, and this is something that works for me and uh, has been working out for two years now. Um, that's why I'm sharing this experience with you right now. Well, first, when you are going on vacation uh, or taking time off, if it's a longer time period, say a week or 10 days or so, um, instead of just uh, leaving and worrying about what's going to happen, prepare your absence plan. What does it mean? Um, step number one, a couple of days before you go, you identify the, the main projects you're working on, and you also make, you make sure that the stakeholders who are working with you on those projects are notified beforehand and also know whom to go to in case they have a question and their emergency arises. How do you do this? Very simple, you send one email, uh, copying everyone, ensuring that um, they know the POCs they can contact in case they have an emergency. Or well, there may be other methodologies that work. This is something that's very simple to do and something that I use in my personal, um, sorry, my professional life. Um, once you prepared your absence plan, very important is not to think about, um, about work. So you need to turn on your non-working mindset. How do you do it? It's very tempting to think that I'm just going to answer this just on email or somebody give me on Slack. So I'm just going to go ahead and respond to this one message. Um, and this is very um, easy because you have your phone uh, always available to you. And what takes the biggest toll on our brain and does not let us relax, there's actually anticipation of that email or that message that something can happen, somebody's going to contact me, so you keep, keep checking your phone. The psychologists have proven that actually that does not let you fully rejuvenate uh, when you come from vacation. It doesn't matter if you're going to Hawaii or staying in your room at home and reading a book, but that anticipation of potential stress actually brings the stress on your shoulders. So um, you have to um, ask yourself this question before you go uh, or before you leave um, on vacation. What is that that I want to, to achieve with this vacation? Uh, basically, do I want to rejuvenate and disconnect? Do I want to, is it an opportunity for me to perform better as a product manager when I come back? So this is just, the idea here is that when you ask yourself this question is that you bring this on top of your mind and you consciously made this decision of disconnecting. Um, that is really important because um, you might intend, uh, but ultimately, if you end up working or answering emails here and there, what it does to your brain is that it brings the working mode to your brain and that it brings your attention back. And then when your vacation ends, you actually do not get that additional energy or recovery that your even detox, uh, like technological detox that your brain needs in order to rejuvenate and disconnect. So when you come back, you come back to your workload. And this is absolutely normal. 70% of people are just absolutely worried that they, when they're going to come back, they're going to have hundreds of emails and that stresses them so much that they continue to check their email box every day so that just they do not get overflowed with a number of emails. Again, this has to be very conscious, very um, um, mindful decision that you want to take before taking your vacation. Number three is get outdoors. Uh, become outdoors junkie. Uh, that is the biggest advice that is given by the study that was conducted in 2014. So um, Carleton University actually conduct conducted the research which proved the relationship uh, between nature has actually um, direct impact on your feeling connected and happy to your life. So highly encouraged is walks, hikes, uh, anything you can do to stay outdoors. It does not really matter what it is. It's your personal choice. But the idea here is, again, that if you don't bring your phone with you, this is where you just focus on the moment, uh, get the vitamin D from sun, uh, breathing from some fresh air and change your environment from sitting in the office or your home office to actually getting outdoors um, and getting that outdoor space and sun and wind and water to enjoy and to completely change your, to your mind and set yourself for relaxation. 
Uh, number four is that, um, advice is to be spontaneous. What does it mean? When we go on an international trip or on vacation or anywhere else, really, product managers like to plan. So a lot of product managers, myself included, we create a list of things we want to do on vacation. Especially if we travel to a certain destination, we create a list of things that we want to visit or we plan certain events, book tickets. Um, even though it sounds exciting and, and so on, uh, if you plan too much, uh, you are actually do not get to relax either because you again set yourself in a certain schedule and you don't let your brain just wander because you are again in that mode of I need to go be here, but this time I need to wake up at that time. So you again set yourself in the scheduled mode. And even though product managers like right to be organized and this makes total sense, especially if you travel abroad or elsewhere for a long period of time, uh, there is a proof in the research that has been conducted um, um, in, if I believe correctly, in about 2020, where people, uh, about 2,000 people were questioned, um, sorry, were surveyed in terms of how did they felt about the vacation that they took that was planned versus an unplanned vacation and their stress levels after that. And then people who actually just continuously went somewhere without no planning and spent time uh, just enjoying what they were doing at the moment were more rejuvenated and more disconnected from, from the work and from the stress environment than the people who have planned everything and did enjoy it as well. However, as a result, did not get that level of relaxation um, and disconnect disconnect from uh, from the schedule in environment, like very rigid and scheduled environment as the other group. And the other, I think most important for me personally, um, advice is don't just plan your going on vacation, plan also your coming back from vacation. Uh, that will help you to disconnect and also avoid that stressing out about how you're going to start your first day, avoiding this anxiety before the first, um, before the first day after the vacation. The way you do it or the way, um, works that works for me is you block your first day or at least a couple of hours to the first day when you come back for just actually coming back. This is when you check your emails, you build your plan for the week, you check with yourself if um, there are other open items you need to follow up on, you make a list that you want to accomplish for the week and so forth. So for that, you don't plan any meetings, you don't jump in right away. Um, you give yourself time to mentally set yourself into the working mode again, and also give yourself space to plan for the coming week. Um, I tried both ways when I just returned and right away went to the meeting, I tried both ways taking time and planning before going into the meeting. In my personal experiences, the latter worked for me much better than the prior because um, when I was able to plan and when I was able to check on the latest emails, I was I felt much more confident and I felt much less during the first day versus when I right away picked up where I left off. Um, so I would encourage using that and see how it works for you. And just as a recap, what I would like you to take out from this session is that there's a lot of opportunities uh, for you to maintain your mental health while you have a very stressful multitasking um, product manager job. And here are a couple of things that work for me on a daily basis. Um, first, as I already said, you have to know the beast you're dealing with. So one thing is to say I'm burned out or I'm stressed out. The different thing is to actually know what are those factors that affect you every day and what are those particular uh, meetings or projects, a type of projects or type of people, whatever it is for you that brings you stress and anxiety or um, ultimately what whatever it is for you that you call burnout. So it's important to track your track your day-to-day um, -day for a week or so and identify them. Number two is you need to take back that control. Um, when you feel in control, you will not feel anxiety or you will not feel stress. How do you do that? You um, keep the 
you, you keep your, you stay your ground, basically. You delegate, you prioritize ruthlessly. When you prioritize something, you ensure that there is data behind the priority. You know the particular feature you're working on has all the customer data, making it up, and you know that that is the actual priority instead of um, just one customer asking you for something and making and, and escalating the state as priority. Um, I've been in both type of situations. So once we have data to bake you up, it is okay to say no. And uh, there is no one expecting you to do it all. The other piece is also, uh, which is very important, is delegate. Uh, as a product manager, we take a lot of ownership and we've been held accountable for the performance of our product. So a lot of times we end up picking up everything that has not been done. Um, yes, this is a really important. And there is no one gonna, that, who's going to do it uh, except of you. But also, don't be afraid to delegate. Don't be afraid to help other people grow um, and maybe mentoring someone who is growing into product manager role and who, who could help you do the task, which potentially could help you to solve your um, stress or anxiety, whatever you experience in there at work. And number three, set boundaries. Then be firm about, about, about those. Leave your work at work. Don't, um, when you finish working, don't spend your time taking showers thinking about working projects. Think about other things, something that excites you, something that um, you do on the side. Uh, give that time for your brain to actually collect those ideas so when they come, you come back to work next day, you are excited because you're full of those creative ideas that you would like to implement. And you also had this break between the working mode and the next working day. For me personally, it is important because uh, if I don't switch, if I continue thinking about my project or brainstorm my ideas or talk about work uh, with my friends or spouse, then I, next day I feel like I never stopped working. And that brings frustration because then you do not have time to actually, not that you don't have time, but you then, I question yourself, if my life only work? Um, so disconnect and be firm about those boundaries that you set. And number four, it always, it is very hard when you get into this um, race of deliverables and your product performance. It is hard to remember about those things that are, that really makes you happy. Is it a bus stop reading a book? Is it going outdoors on a picnic or whatever it is for you? Remember those things and do them often. Uh, don't just say it's only for the weekend. Make those weekdays also special for you because that is what actually fills you up. This is this is something that makes gives you internal power and courage to maintain your mental health balance and also helps you to uh, beat your beat stress, build the level of cortisol in your blood that actually leads to burnout and stress. Um, this was all for today. I hope that it was helpful for you. Um, thank you a lot for your attention. Uh, it's been a pleasure sharing my experience with you.